hello and welcome back to the channel today's video we are going to be looking at rafa benita's side back in 2023 at valencia where they last won the la liga and they won the uefa cup as well all of this was based around a very solid defense but also a very smart pressing approach so what we're going to do is analyze that tactic a little then in football manager we are going to attempt to recreate that with success hopefully as well but before we do make sure you are subscribed to the channel make sure you like this video you can leave a comment all of that helps out the channel but also we are sponsored by one football so make sure you check this app out one football and the rdf tactics channel have chosen to collab once again downloading this app would help this channel out in many ways but why exactly should you download it? The OneFootball app is an excellent app for football fans. It's the best place to check recent news, legally watch matches, yes, for free, and you can follow your team and be notified when something major happens. It's also great to check out the latest transfer rumours, and if you're like me, you don't want to miss out on any rumours, transfer season can be fun. Once all the league starts up as well, it's a great app to check statistics. This channel creates recreations. Using the OneFootball app helps grab vital stats, but also you will have access to team lineups before the football match starts. This is a great app if you want to follow football around the world or get the latest news just on your team. So make sure you try it out, but it does also help this channel out a lot and gives it many great opportunities to grow. So give it a go and I promise, you won't regret it. When building from the back, Valencia could do both, play out from the back and hit more direct balls into the channels for runners to run onto. The direct play was more involved during Rafa's earlier years where they could quickly look to get the ball forward. However, the 4-2-3-1 had unpredictability when most of the opposition utilised two in midfield, meaning Valencia usually had the spare man in midfield and could usually play out from the back using a quick tempo. With Roberto Ayala also being good with the ball at his feet, this also helped Valencia during their build-up phase as he could play balls into midfield beating the press, initiating Valencia's attack. In possession, everything happened at a quicker tempo, which left the opposition chasing for the most part. That allowed Valencia to find players in space and making use of the natural passing networks the 4-2-3-1 could form. Defensively, Valencia were very solid. In the 2003-04 season, they conceded just 27 goals, which was obviously the best defence in La Liga. Rafa's success at Valencia was built around having a solid defence. Teams that utilise the 4-2-3-1 in the modern era can be seen defending in a 4-4-2, and in Rafa's system, even back in 2003, this was no different. Off the ball, Valencia would shape up in a 4-4-2 which was very compact, leaving very little space between the two banks of four. This also meant that the wingers had a defensive responsibility in helping their fullbacks down the flanks. Valencia's wide men could be seen doubling up on the opposing winger to stop dangerous wingers, stopping them from going on the outside and also cutting in. David Albelda was also key in situations when defenders needed covering. A defender, mostly the fullbacks, would sometimes leave their defensive position to close down an opponent. David Albelda had the responsibility of covering, not leaving those areas exposed. The central midfielders, like in most systems, were vital, and in Valencia, they both operated as a double pivot. Albelda was more of the destroyer, whilst Ruben Barraca supported the attacking midfield by pushing further forward. Rafa's side were also a pressing side. They would block the central route from the front and force the opponents out wide where Valencia's press could become more intense, with the touchline being very useful. Of course, once they work the opponents out wide, they only have inside or backwards to play and if they chose to play centrally, Valencia could then force a mistake. Moreover, if the team in possession managed to find their winger, Valencia could heavily outnumber their winger now in possession, where the ball can now easily be won. The back line was not extremely high, but they did have to push up to minimise the space between the defensive line and the midfield. Nevertheless, they would not look to use the offside trap and instead would look to drop back as a unit, making it difficult to play through. 
In attack, Valencia had very good individuals such as Pablo Aymar, who was just incredible in attacking midfield, and Vincente, the very talented left winger. When Valencia looked to play out wide, Vincente was a nightmare to deal with, as he was a very good dribbler but someone that can go on the outside and also come on the inside. And Pablo Aymar was the side's main creator who often looked to operate between the defensive midfielder area and the defensive line. Both wingers had to work hard, but they were supported in attack by overlapping fullbacks, where they could overload the defending fullbacks if the wingers chose to stay out wide. If the wingers looked to cut inside, this would leave space for the fullbacks to find a cross or pullback for the men in the middle. The creative Pablo Aymar was the main man in attack. At times, the creative playmaker was unplayable, and though he had a slight frame, his balance allowed him to ride challenges and physical duels. This often resulted in defenders becoming more forceful in their duels, resulting in fouls. Pablo Aymar was simply the creative hub for Valencia. Up top, in 2003, they had Mister, who was more comfortable with his back towards goal, linking up play before making his run forward inside the box. He was not the most technically gifted player, but in Rafa's final season, Mister had his best season scoring 19 La Liga goals, making him the third highest scorer that year. But unfortunately, that wraps up this brief Valencia tactical analysis back in 2003 when Rafa Benitez was in charge. This was requested by a subscriber in the comment section, I thought let me quickly do it and the research was from the holding midfielder, the link will be in the description but for now we are going to go into Football Manager to have a look at the replicated tactic and how well or how bad it did in La Liga with Valencia. So now let's head over to Football Manager. So here we are in Football Manager and though the formation was a 4-2-3-1, we have a 4-4-1-1 simply because the wingers need to do their defensive work. So we had to use wide midfielders in order to try and get those wingers to do their defensive work. We are going to go through the team instructions, the player roles and instructions before looking at the results and then ending the video. So for the team instructions, we are using the attacking mentality. We want to be more direct, get the ball further forward at a higher tempo, but also more directly as well. We will look to play out from the defense in Football Manager and we will look to overlap on the left and the right as well. The passing directness is set to slightly more direct, but the tempo is set to standard, which if you are following the attacking mentality, it will be fast tempo anyway. In the final third, we don't have any direct instructions, so we left it on mixed cross. There's no work the ball or hit early crosses, no running at the defence or being more expressive. In transition, when the possession has been lost, we will look to counter press. I believe Valencia side back then, they were kind of counter pressing, maybe not as a unit, but they were individuals who were very energetic, looking to close down the opposition as soon as Valencia lost the ball. When possession has been won, we will look to counter as well, as Valencia could be very dangerous on their counter attacks. Lastly, out of possession, we are using a standard defensive line but with a lower line of engagement, try and place emphasis on making it narrow and compact, leaving little room and little space in between the lines for the opponents to play through. For the defensive width, we are using force the opponents out wide. The present intensity is set to more urgent. We are preventing the short goalkeeper distribution and also getting stuck in. So that there is the team instructions now we're going to move over to the player roles and their instructions as well so in goal we do have the standard goalkeeper on the defensive duty both fullbacks are the fullbacks on supportive duty but they have no instructions and in defense we have a nice mixture of the ball playing defender which would be Ayala and then his defensive partner would be Pellegrini which is the central defender on the defensive duty out wide on the left we have a wide midfielder on the attacking duty he's only instructed to dribble more he's also going to be getting further forward but that's because of the attacking duty and on the right side of midfield we have the wide midfielder but on the supportive duty and he's instructed to get further forward in central midfield we have a nice little double pivot the central midfielder on the defensive duty that there is supposed to be david albelda he's asked to close down more and tackle harder that is so when we do force the opponents out wide in case they come inside into the middle we can then get our players to close down more be more energetic forcing the opponent's mistake and trying to win the ball 
His midfield partner is the box to box midfielder. He has closed down more, tackle harder for the very same reasons. Up in the attacking midfield, we have the Pablo Aymaro, the advanced playmaker. Again, he has closed down more and tackled harder for the same reasons as the central midfielder. Lastly, up top, we do have the pressing forward on the attacking duty, someone that's going to work hard up top, making it difficult for the defending or the opposing team to play out from the back. And of course, he's going to be vital in setting or forcing our opponents to go out wide. So that there is the player roles, the instructions, the team instructions as well. But now, lastly, we can look at the results and see how well this tactic has done in Football Manager 2021. So let's look at the results. In the competition, surprisingly, this tactic actually won the league with Valencia getting 89 points. In 38 games, we won 28, drawing 5, losing 5. Those 5 losses came away to Granada, Cadiz, Celta Vigo and Barcelona and there's also one home loss to Elche, very disappointing. In the Copa del Rey though, we got knocked out in the 4th round by Celta de Vigo. Admittedly, we did use a B side, we did use a heavy rotated side, of course trying to get better performance in La Liga. So if we look at the La Liga stats for the most points per game, of course it is going to be Valencia. For the most goals, Valencia coming in second with 68 goals. We did have the most shots for, for the fewest shots against, we came in second, second behind Atletico Madrid, which is of course no embarrassment. For the best pass completion, we aren't in the top eight. For the most possession, we come in eight for the average possession with 52% of the ball, which isn't bad. For the most tackles won, Valencia topped that list. As I said before, using a mid block on Football Manager, you will get a lot of tackles. And for the dribbles made, we are in third place with 127. Most clean sheets, Valencia with 27 clean sheets, absolutely incredible. And for the viewers conceded, it is Valencia again on 19. Now for the player stats for the most goals, we have Maxi Gomez, 15 goals in La Liga, which isn't bad. He's joint fifth. For the most assists, we have Carlos Soler on 10 assists, Jose Gaia on 9. For the most shots, Maxi Gomez took the most shots in La Liga, so he should have a better conversion rate. For the most man of the match awards, we have Maxi Gomez in joint second with 6. And we have Gonzalo Guides on 5. For the most key passes, Jose Gaia on 121. That puts him in third place. For the best pass completion, we have nobody in the top 8. Most tackles won, Manu Vallejo, who was our left winger. He is joint first with 121, joint with Francis Quackerland. And for the most dribbles made, we have Gonzalo Guides, who played that Pablo Aymar role. He really isn't suited for it. He doesn't have the teamwork. I feel that creative playmakers need to have good teamwork and composure, decision making. He isn't really all there, but he did do very well. For the most clean sheets, it is our goalkeeper, of course, with 27. And for the fewest conceded, our goalkeeper is there in number one with 13. So that there is the player and team stats. Actually, we can look at the XG. So for the expected goals for, we did come in third place with 60.76 and for the clear-cut chances if we can find that here we are clear-cut chances we are actually joint six with Barcelona, Getafe and Mallorca with 22 but now we can look at the attacking efficiency we can see here that we were aggressive but we were fairly wasteful we could do better in attack again it may need to do some tweaking just some tweaks and you will get a better attack I believe anyway and defensively if we check of course, we were quiet and impenetrable, having the best defence in the league by quite some distance. So, that there is all the important stats. We can now look at the squad stats, who were the top goal scorers, who were the highest assists before we end this video. So, for the top goal scorer, we have Maxi Gomez on 15 goals, Manu Vallejo on 14 and Gonzalo Guides on 11. Carlos Solo got 5, Omar Aldrete got 4, Jason got 4 and Jose Gaia also got 4. For the highest assist, the most creative players, we have Carlos Soler on 10, we have Jose Gaia on 10 as well, Manu Vallejo on 8, Yunus Musa on 7, who's going to be a very, very good player, and we have Maxi Gomez on 5, along with Guides and Gabriel Paulista. But unfortunately, that wraps up 
this video i hope you have enjoyed it if you have make sure you hit that subscribe button make sure you hit like leave a comment as well all of that helps the channel also a big shout out to holden midfield which is where i got this analysis research from my name is rdf it's been a pleasure i enjoyed recording this video for you guys make sure you download the one football app as well but i'll speak to you and see you soon peace out stay safe and god bless